What's up everybody? Thank you for clicking on the link. I know that I am super late, but this is going to be my review of Empire Season 3, Episode 11. Believe it or not, I just watched this show today, okay? So if anybody cares, let's get started. Um, the show starts off in the aftermath of Cookie um, being a one-woman demolition team when she destroyed Lucius's office and his studio the night before. She scratched up bloody, getting ready to take a shower to wash all of the, the hell from the night before off of her, okay? And she actually regrets doing what she did because um, she made the statement. She said, Lord, what have I done, okay? So she regrets it. Um, while she's getting showered up and cleaned up and everything, they show um, back at Lucius's studio where these men are there actually cleaning up the Empire headquarters after what she's done. They're getting all the blood off of the elevator and whatnot, you know, taking all of his um, busted um, platinum records off the wall and everything, getting it, you know, trying to restore it back to its original exuberance. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, her sister is there comforting her, which is surprising because her and Candace don't get along that often. You know, but it was really refreshing to see the two of them actually having a sisterly conversation. She brings her a cup of tea and then Cookie starts telling her all about how she destroyed Lucius's office and how she messed around and made a mistake and kissed him while she was there. She don't know why that happened and she starts having her many flashbacks of the night of her and Lucius. You know, when she first lost her virginity, when she got pregnant, when she got married and so forth and so on. But nobody cares about her track record with Lucius. We already know the story, practically. All right, moving right along. Um, <clears throat> so, they show Boo Boo Kitty. Boo Boo Kitty, this is her first day on the job. And uh, she starts off her day by giving Lucius a quickie in the bathroom because Cookie showed up at Lucius's office this next day to tell him not to say anything about what happened the night before, which is crazy to me because I don't know how and why he's not mad after everything that she's done. I mean, I'm sure he's mad, but he doesn't attempt or he doesn't make any type of uh, retaliation comments towards her. But she showed up there so she could tell him not to tell anybody about what she did, okay? So anyway, Boo Boo Kitty's first day on the job. She's got on this bad white suit, honey. <clears throat> and she's walking through there, and the first person she goes to see is Becky. Um, when she goes to see Becky, she notices Becky's got this dry hello for her because she realizes that Becky's a little bit upset or feeling some kind of way about the fact that she didn't get the job as the head of A&R because we know that Becky has been wanting that job for some for quite some time now. And what's interesting about that conversation that Boo Boo Kitty had with Becky is that she was trying to comfort her and let her know um, that she needs her uh, because once again, Boo Boo Kitty can't really do that job without Becky. And she makes it quite clear that she can't do the job without Becky. And when she asks Becky for a rundown or for, to catch her up on what's going on, Becky goes right through. Boom, 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 boom. Becky's on top of her thing like she always is. But Boo Boo Kitty comforts her and tells her, I know you wanted this job, but you've got to remember that it was only two, three weeks ago that you were Lucius's assistant. So um, you're not really ready or experienced enough to be the head of A&R. And that was nice of Boo Boo Kitty because um, Becky really needed to hear that. Boo Boo Kitty even told her, um, don't worry because maybe in a year or two you'll have my job. And it might be sooner than that, but we'll get to that later. So anyway, she um, basically she makes Becky feel better about her job. She tells Tiana that she trusts Becky's decision and that she's looking up to um, Becky and she's going to be depending on Becky to help her and keep her on top of things. So Becky enjoys it. She appreciates it. She even hugs Boo Boo Kitty when she gets ready to leave. But like I said, Boo Boo Kitty was thinking a little more highly of herself than she should have because I think she has forgotten that the or doesn't realize maybe that the only reason she's gotten this job as the head of A&R is because Lucius is trying to spite Cookie. <clears throat> so it's not because of her qualifications. As a matter of fact, Becky is far more qualified for that job than she is. But whatever. <laughs> Let's move on. <clears throat> I don't like Boo Boo Kitty. Anyway. So. The next scene they show is Thirsty bringing a. This bodyguard. For Lucius's mother. Now Mama Leah don't know whether this bodyguard is a man or a woman. But she notices that. Uh, 
the he she <laughs> is what she was thinking is paying attention to the little girl's butts as they walk by they she's looking at the booty of the performers or these auditioners as they walk by and so mama leah ain't got nothing else better to do but follow her and to test her by having one of the little girl one of the girls uh drop a napkin and pick it up in front of her to see her reaction of course <clears throat> they need to find mama leah something to do so anyway <clears throat> then they show hakeem tiana and becky <clears throat> they're at the auditions because they're working on Tiana's new video <clears throat> and they're trying to find some backup dancers for her. and during the time that they're sitting here doing these auditions Hakeem who goes from one woman to the next every time you look around he's in love with a different woman I don't know how he made his rounds back to Tiana because I thought Tiana liked little girls but anyway they back together now and he's trying to push baby Bella up on uh, Tiana now Tiana tells him, he says, I don't, why are you trying to push this baby on me? Uh, he, and, you know, she's got a mama already and she does, which is Boo Boo Kitty or Anika, y'all. Uh, I can't stop calling her Boo Boo Kitty ever since Cookie called her that in season one. But, <clears throat> but he's trying to force this child on her and we know that Hakeem himself doesn't even see that baby that much. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, Lucius has taken responsibility for the baby. He signed the birth certificate, did he not? So anyway, I don't know what kind of games uh, Lee Daniels is playing or what kind of games Hakeem is playing, but he know he ain't thinking about that baby like that. So I don't know why he's trying to push that baby up on Tiana like that. But anyway, she don't have no problem letting him know she ain't ready for all of that yet. Okay? So then they show Mama Leah. Mama Leah, who happens to hate Boo Boo Kitty, we all know that. So she goes to see Tariq on her own. Some kind of way she finds time to slip away from that bodyguard <clears throat> who went on lunch break or something like that. Well, she goes to see uh, Tariq, who she knows has a thing against Lucius. But she goes to him and tells him she hates Boo Boo Kitty just as much as Cookie hates her. And he wants him to, and she wants him to get rid of Boo Boo Kitty. She's like... Please get rid of her. She knows things. I don't like her. I hate her. Lucius promised me he was going to get rid of her, but instead he didn't gave her a job. So Tariq invites Mama Leah into his apartment and they discuss some plans because the next thing you know, um, Cookie, whose who's boyfriend, Alonzo, has gotten out of jail or wherever he was because the newspaper says he's been exonerated of all these crimes, which is good for both of them. But uh, she goes to see... She goes to Empire one day and she runs into, what's the girl's name? Portia, her assistant. And wow, because Portia has just overheard the FBI people talking while they were at, FBI, at Empire Studios that they were looking for Cookie. Apparently, they have violated Cookie's probation because of the fact that she works with known felons and criminals and whatnot. And of course, we all know, and Cookie made this clear on the episode, that she is a gangster rap. She has a gangster rap label. So these are the kind of people she deals with. But anyway, Portia warns her. She lets her know, gives her head up. You need to get out of here because they ain't here looking for you. So Cookie goes to, she goes and calls Alonzo to come and pick her up. When he comes to pick her up, she explains to him, she, these people are looking for her. She don't know what's happening. But he thinks Lucius is behind it, naturally. And so he get, he, he puts some 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 manhood in his chest and he decides that he's gonna go pay Lucius a visit because he's sick of him he got to deal with him put him in his place let him know that uh Cookie is his woman so they go to see Lucius and of course he tries to um throw his weight around but Lucius ain't hearing it they almost get in a fight but he tells Lucius that that's my woman now she belongs to me Cookie's just eating this up but Lucius is laughing at him he thinks it's real cute and funny and um, so anyway, he tells him, but Lucius winds up letting her know. He says, I had nothing to do with him violating your probation. He said he don't get down like that. If he want to get somebody, he'll get, he knows how to get them. So he tells her that it's probably Tariq who's doing it. Okay. And so they eventually work that out. And uh, Cookie and Alonzo actually leave his office after that. <clears throat> and they go on about their business and they don't really talk a whole lot about that anymore in the episode. Um, the FBI don't even confront her, in, not in this episode anyway. Um, but I, I got a feeling that whatever Mama Leah has told Tariq, Tariq is going to use, try to use Cookie to bring Lucius down because his commanding officer then told him to leave, that he, he needs to come off the case and he can't mess with him. So he's trying to use Boo Boo Kitty and Cookie to get to him. Okay. <clears throat> Tariq runs into Boo Boo Kitty. 
And his way of getting rid of her is to actually force her to go into the witness protection program. He subpoenas her and he tells her that um, you're going to have to go into the witness protection program because if Lucia fi Lucius finds out that you've been subpoenaed, he's going to do everything he can to get rid of you. So you can either go into the witness protection program or you can take your chances with Lucius. And he's insinuating that Lucius might kill her or something, even though I don't believe Lucius would do that. But she thought about it and she decided to take Tariq's offer of witness protection program and she goes on with him. Uh, <clears throat> She leaves the baby with Hakeem one day. She's, she's actually going to take the baby with her, but Hakeem is looking for her, and he sees her waiting on Tyreek to pick her up. And so he comes by, and she tells him to take the baby with him. <clears throat> and I find it kind of interesting that he did not want to babysit or keep this baby. He, he ain't got time for the baby, but yet later on he wants Tiana to get close to the baby as if that baby means something to him. But anyway, it's crazy. Lee Daniels and his writing sucks to me sometimes. I'm sorry, I gotta say it. Sometimes he's all over the place, like I'm all over the place with this video, but y'all understand, right? <clears throat> so anyway, um, what happens after that? Because this is gonna be quick, y'all. Oh, Jamal. Jamal and Tori are recording this new song, which sounds really good, and um, Y'all wait just a second. Cookie tells, when she comes in and she hears this song that Jamal and Tori record, she really likes the song. She goes from calling Tori a crackhead to actually complimenting her on her ability to play the electric guitar. She tells her, play that funky music, white girl. So, you know, Cookie, the only somebody I know that can talk about you like a dog out one side of your mouth and then actually make you feel good out the other side of your mouth. <laughs> but she did that and she left them. But she warned Jamal not to let Lucius see what they are creating. She told him to make sure that he erased the hard drive after he gets through laying his track <clears throat> so that Lucius can't find it. And he agrees to do it and uh but he fails to do it. Um, later on in the show, he actually walks out and leaves thinking he's going to go back to finishing it. And Lucius walks, comes to the studio and finds it and actually listens to his music. So, of course, you know, Lucius is going to have to use something against him because, like Cookie said, Lucius is very jealous and intimidated by Jamal for some crazy reason. Um, so what Lucius does, um, Lucius winds up talking to Tori behind Jamal's back and talks her into playing that devil's chord on his Inferno project because Jamal didn't want to use that in his song, but he winds up going behind his back, basically trying to steal her from Jamal. And Jamal finds out about it because he shows, he tells him, he brings him into the record, to the uh, rehearsal one day and he sees Tori come out. And of course, Jamal is pissed off. Now, it's not like Tori can't work with him and Lucius, but Jamal is not hearing that. Jamal is not trying to work with, it doesn't want her working with him or Lucius. Him and Lucius. He wants her to choose, of course, because he ain't feeling Lucius like that because he knows Lucius is a snake, okay? Um, D Major tries to get back with Jamal, but Jamal rejects him because he says he's not good for his sobriety because D Major is still in the closet. Um, so he basically disses D Major. D Major leaves with his tail tucked between his legs, and that's it for him. And then he hooks up, though, later on with the counselor, Philip. You know, the cute one who everybody was wondering whether or not he was gay, but I was hoping he wasn't gay. But he proved in this episode that he was because he winds up kissing Jamal. They make out, and he winds up spending the night. So we know what happens there. Okay. So Alonzo... Uh, well, no, we already told y'all he's been exonerated of all of his crimes. Uh, Andre, tell you what Andre got going on. Andre and Shine are actually working with these thugs that Shine had working for him before. They are gathering up a plan or devising a plan to actually overthrow Lucius and take over Empire. Andre is. And he brings, Shine brings, Frida Gats and some dude named Danger and some other people to the meeting, but I don't think Frida was there for that particular meeting, but they all come over there and Nessa, and they're at this ghetto studio that they're usually at <clears throat> where Shine likes to go and Nessa is trying to you know, subtly warn Andre, why are you fooling with Danger? Not Danger. 
So she tries to tell him that, but Andre insists, because we know Andre ain't going to listen to nobody. He's a hard head. He's stupid, okay? He really is stupid for even trying to take over Empire. He done forgot that Cookie is there. He's going to have to contend with Cookie for that. Cookie ain't going to let him just take over Lucius, okay? <clears throat> his project or his Empire, whatever. So anyway... He's meeting with them and everything, and he decides, oh, yeah, we're going to work together. And Shine tells him that there is this man named Raphael who has something to do with this Vegas part of the plan. And he wants to meet with Lucius. He says the only way that he'll work with them or deal with any of this is if he gets to meet Lucius. And Andre tells him, well, nobody can meet Lucius unless they go through me first. So they set this meeting up and um, Shine actually takes Danger and Andre with him. But Raphael doesn't, isn't aware that Andre is going to be there. And so they go there. Raphael is this Italian or this Latino fella. <clears throat> and he's obviously psychotic because he gets really mad. He doesn't want to shake Andre's hand when he meets him. And he's going off. He's like, who is this dude? I don't talk to people like that. Who is this coming to my party? I mean, real crazy. And um, he calls his wife, Juliana, into the room, who happens to be played by Nia Long. She comes in and he accuses her of going behind his back, bringing Andre to this meeting or inviting him to the meeting. So he's beating her, slapping her, abusing her in front of the guys. And it's obvious that Andre and Shine don't like the fact that he's beating on her like that. And so um, at some point, after he done slapped her around and knocked her around a little bit, um, he runs her away, tells her to go fix her face. And when she turns her back on him, she goes in her purse, pulls out her gun, and turns around and shoots him. Which she should have, because he was a low-down, dirty, crazy dog. And when she shoots him, Danger looks over at her and gets mad and calls her the B-word. And he pulls his gun out, getting ready to shoot Juliana. Well, Shine wasn't having it. Shine shot him in the back of the head. And he shot him two more times. So now Raphael and Danger both are dead. They standing there looking crazy. Oh my God. Um, but Juliana tells Andre that she still wants to work with him. And um, that's pretty much the end of the episode. Like I said, the, the only thing that went on in this filler episode was a lot of little mess going on. But the things that happened was Boo Boo Kitty um, got put into the witness protection program. That's how Tyreek got rid of her for Mama Leah. Um, Hakeem is trying to push up on Tiana with this baby. He's trying to force her to get close to this baby that he ain't even close to. Um, let's see. Uh, Cookie is still, she's in a good place with a man, Alonzo. And I guess she's still trying to deal with the fact that she has destroyed Lucia's studio and hoping that he won't tell anybody. And she's trying to, I guess, going to get to the bottom of why the feds are trying to put her in jail or do something to her for violating her probation. Uh, and that's about it. This whole episode was kind of, it wasn't a bad episode, but it was just a whole lot of nothing happening in the show. Because we know Empire is bad. The writers of Empire are really bad about starting something, dropping seeds, and then not really planting them and allowing them to grow on here, they'll show you something for a hot minute and then it'll just end and you'll be wondering what happened to that person or what happened to that storyline. So it's going to be real interesting tomorrow to see what actually happens. I, I, I hope I have a better review after tomorrow because, um, like I said, what I saw on Wednesday was kind of scattered and that is why this review is scattered. So um, anyway, I just want to make sure I didn't leave anything important out. Um let's see that, that's about it I, I want to see what role Nia Long's character Juliana is going to play and how long she's going to be in it because like I said they good about bringing people on here for two episodes or one or two episodes and then you don't see them anymore so we'll see we'll see if they got some follow through in any area so far they hadn't proven to have any follow through Okay, so anyway, until next time, um, thank you for checking out this video. It's ha this has been a fair play moment, um, and hopefully I will see you very soon after tomorrow. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.